So I'm going to talk to you about single page web apps in Ember. Uh, so I'm going, I've assumed that you guys are a pretty technical audience, so I'm going to be primarily talking to you in code tonight. So here we go. I'm assuming you guys know what a single page web app is, something like a Gmail or a Google Docs or an iWork. Um, and Ember, for those who don't know, is uh, was called Sprout Core 2. It's a JavaScript framework that tries to take the boilerplate away. Well, that's what it says on the package anyway. So it does this in two ways. It does this by propagating data around your JavaScript objects. And once that data has been propagated, it automatically updates the view. So it takes a bunch of concerns away from you. Now, I'm not going to be able to go into the whole Ember thing. So it's here to pique your interest. When I don't have time to talk about something, I'm just going to call it magic. So to give you something to grasp onto, here is a really awesome application that we're going to put together, a task app. It's got users, it's got tasks, you select the user, it shows you the tasks. Amazing. So we're going to have some natural uh, sort of objects fall out of here. We've got models, we've got controllers, you might have a couple of user objects, Mark and Bob, and a couple of tasks. They get displayed by controllers, and in a single page web app, unlike a normal web page, each of those are views. So there's multiple views on a single page here. So here's a pretty dodgy object model. You've got um, user, you've got models down here and controllers, and I don't have time to talk to you about the tasks and uh, the views and the templates, so that's going to stay as magic. Look it up yourself. So let's create an object. Let's create a user object. It's a pretty simple declaration. We've got a user has a name and some tasks, and we can instantiate those objects and get some values out of it were that's exciting. Now we'll have a user's controller. A user's controller really has a bunch of users that are associated with it. So we've got a user's controller here. We'll throw some users in it, all good. Now, we'll also have a selected user. And we're going to use a selected user to say, when I change the selected user, I want to update the list of tasks on the right-hand side. So again, a little bit of magic that pops up down the bottom here is from the user's controller, we can actually navigate into another object, the selected user object, and pick out its name. So we can traverse a graph of objects by using a string, which is extraordinarily powerful. Now, when you're building a big app, encapsulation is very important. You're going to have a bunch, a bunch of classes floating around. Um, and so one of the ways we want to encapsulate that is making sure it's not a spaghetti tree and things talk to the right parts. So we're going to have a user view talking to a user controller and a task view talking to a task controller. But we've got a bit of a problem here. We've got a user's controller who knows what the current user is, but it's the task's controller that has to update what gets displayed. So we need to propagate this data around the system, and this is exactly what Ember is built for. So Ember, we're going to build a task controller here, that's the declaration, and we're going to create a selected user binding to the user controller. And what that does is says when a user's controller's selected user gets updated, that data is going to magically appear in our tasks controller. Oh yes, I said magic. <laughs> so that's all great. We're now propagating data around the system. It's in a nice declarative format. It's easy to read and understand. But sometimes we want to trigger events when a piece of data is moved around. So the selected user is updated in the task controller. When that occurs, we now want to filter the results of the tasks that are listed there. And then here we go. Here's a magic method that gets executed when the uh, observer is called. So we've got our user and our, our task controller. And our UX guy comes to us and says, dude, I really want the word me next to me when I'm logged in, because we've got the best UX guy in the world. So how can we do this? Now, Ember's all about data. So we don't really want to make this a function call or anything like that, or we won't do it in the view. We've already got a user that has a name, Mark or Bob. But what I'd like to do is inspect that piece of data. And when it's the current user, I want to append the word me to it. And so that's what we can do here. We can say when the name of the user changes, I want you to update the pretty name property. And it does that by doing this, fun this function. Now, Everything in this system appears as properties, which is amazing because you can now react to it. And you can also pull the data out more. I like more. All right, so where are we up to? So that tells you how to propagate data around at a high level. But how this all really works, and this is the really technical part. Yeah, hold on, people. Um, there's this thing called the run loop in Ember. 
So the run loop is effectively a queue, a topic queue of four, of four messages, message types. And when you do big things like bindings or deletions, Ember takes a function, puts it on the queue, and stacks them all up so that at the end of the run loop, it will then execute all of them. Now what this gives you is the ability to update data in batch. So you can propagate data around to hundreds, if not thousands of objects in your system, have all the data move around, and then, and only then, update your views. You get batch updating. This is the problem that, that, that toolkits like um, Backbone have. Every time you update a piece of data, the view gets updated. So what Ember does is take Backbone and wipe it, and then throw it away. <laughs> The reason this works is JavaScript is fast and the DOM is slow. So, magic just got fucking real, people. <laughs> That's how it goes. All right, so what did we just see? We just saw data move around by computer properties, observers, and bindings, and um, stuff that it getting updated in batch. So what do I know? I know that this is freaking hard. I ran a commercial team of uh, about five people building a front-end website for this and it took us about four weeks to get past novice. It is an extraordinarily steep learning curve. It really only works in modern browsers. I use six and seven. They tell you to use Chrome Frame. And, it, but it's very, very powerful. So, thank you very much. My name's Mark. This is my product Agile Bench, and thank you all very much. Awesome. Thank you, Mark.